welcome back you guys to another video. We are not too far from home today. We are heading over to Teton Valley again to ride with Dave McClure and Riley Kincaid. I'm super stoked about it, you know, to get out with the Black Cats and uh, the Articat team is always fun. Articat's such a legendary brand in the Stoneville Industries. The whole Articat team did an Avalanche Level 1 course earlier this year. We'll probably do some stuff out on the hill and tie back to that training session that they did earlier this season. We're gonna be meeting and uh, heading up into a zone that we've never been before. Yeah. It's actually snowing, which yeah. is something we haven't had in a while. Hopefully it keeps snowing throughout the entire day. All right, here we go. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Long time no see. It's yeah. <laughs> it's been a couple years. Yeah. Yeah, it has been. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually, for Riley and I, this is the trailhead that we were at when Rob passed. This is the first time we've been back here. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. Big day. You guys want to do a beacon check? Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Do it. Yeah. Cameraman, gotta check yours. <laughs> Sweet. So is this a hardcore? Uh, yeah, it's the hardcore, hardcore as coil over shocks. Really sharp colors, man. Yeah. Thing looks hot. I, uh, I got a Speedworks L2 can, but other than that, it's bone stock. Nice. It's, that's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Dave, obviously your sled looks like it's pretty blinged out too. Do you got anything special going on there? Yeah, I did Ice Age, Elevate, Spindles, a lot of Arctic Cat accessories, front bumper, rear bumper, seat running boards. Then I got an L2 Speedworks can, a little bit of clutching. Oh, and then uh, Fox sent me uh, four shocks for it, so. I love that uh, red, white, and blue. Everything looks so clean. I love the white skis, too. That's a good touch. Yeah. Riley and I have been riding a lot lately, and oh, yeah. we're finding you know a lot of slab avalanches, and you know we're paying more attention to it now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, I've I, I think wouldn't you agree? We've seen more avalanches mm -hmm. this year than ever. Oh yeah, it's a bad year. Yeah, so we'll just be safe and go have fun. Absolutely, that's the beautiful thing about snowmobiling is you don't need uh, hills to have fun. You're under mm -hmm. your own power, so oh, yeah, right. play it safe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, sounds good to me. Let's get after it. Right where those two posts are, and that's where the Beacon Checker station's gonna be in memory of Rob. We've got this super nice sign made up out of metal and stainless. Then, you know, Adam Anderson project, uh, his wife's been putting these signs up all over the place, you know, just to get, get the word out to people, hey, this is avalanche country, you know, be careful, so. We're all trying to make a difference, trying to save a life. Yeah. So it's yeah. super important to be thorough with your beacon checks, checking over all your equipment, and checking the forecast. For information, you can check out the Avalanche app, avalanche.org, or jhavalanche.org for this area. This stuff is just awesome. It's a good, good last reminder before you head up in the hill to kind of be in your face. I mean, it says right on there. Have you checked the Avalanche forecast for today? Well, and like we were talking earlier. You know, any high risk activity, you've got a checklist that you need to go through. If right. you're flying in an airplane, the pilot has a checklist that he goes through. And snowmobiling's high risk, and we need to do that. And, you know, these are all part of that checklist. Yep.
What are you guys doing to minimize your risk out here when you're traveling through the backcountry? What are you looking for? Well, we usually try to stay off like any slope greater than 30 degrees and open. Obviously avoiding train traps and uh, yeah, just, just trying to stay in simple terrain. Um, you know, not getting into those super steep drainages that you're, you know, consistently see and slide. Yeah, it's totally a risk versus reward thing. I always think back to something Jeremy Hankey told us up in BC a few years ago. You know, you always gotta be thinking about what's above you, what's below you, and what happens if it slides. Um, and if you can constantly be thinking about those three questions, I think you can really minimize your risk mm -hmm. when you're traveling out here. In the industry as a whole, we're kind of ramping up this this avalanche training, and it's timely because you know, the sleds are just it's so easy to ride. We're getting into this gnarly terrain, and and it's we're pushing the envelope. We're wanting to ride the steeper stuff, but you got to tone it back down because there's nothing worse than riding out of the mountains without your buddy. So taking that level one avalanche course, they taught us that us snowmobilers, we don't have to get crazy with you know every ride digging a pit to check snow conditions. Um, when the cameraman gets stuck, you can just look in the trench and uh, find the, the, the layers in here. And so, you know, we keep talking about this persistent slab. As I dig underneath it and above it, that is just a solid sheet of ice right here. Look at that, you know, so we've got this whole layer right here that all this snowpack's sitting on and that's where these slab av avalanches are happening. And as the snow starts to facet and these snowflakes start to degrade and lose their shape and th they get rounder, um, so that's what faceting is. And when you put round little ball bearing type snowflakes on top or below a layer like this, creates conditions that can uh, cause an avalanche very easily, if not naturally. Hey, what's up? My name is Will Mook. Um, I am an owner, founder, and instructor for the Mountain Riding Lab. What's up? I'm Matt Shebaum from Jackson, Wyoming, and uh, I'm an avalanche instructor for the Mountain Riding Lab. So we teach motorized specific avalanche courses, whether you're a pro rider or uh, just a recreationalist. It's been really awesome having the uh, Black Cats and Articat out here with us this week. It's so awesome to see the snowmobile industry and the manufacturers and the pro riders stepping up and making avalanche education a priority. But like, I see some of these, like that probe's a little older, kind of got not the best locking mechanism. Might be time to update probe. There's people with generations of backcountry knowledge and that's awesome. But it's really important to be pairing that, that experiential knowledge with some formal education as well. Hopefully that translates to the rest of the community and people realize that it's an essential part of mountain riding. I've drawn a slide path right here. This is the top, this is the bottom. Depending on where you are on the hill is where you're gonna start your search. Just because the pro riders are just now getting the, the education doesn't mean that you think, you know, you don't need to be taking these classes because you're not as extreme as them. We're all riding the same, same terrain, the same mountains. We just might not be upside down as much as those guys. was always reminding me how old he was and now I'm all of a sudden I'm the old guy and you know I'm out with Riley and you know Kyle and Maverick and they're 20 22 years old at most I feel like you know I can kind of be a mentor to these guys like I've been there hill climb racing especially is so dang competitive when I started I was by myself Rob he was kind of slowing down on his race career and and you know ramping up helping Riley the last race Rob and Riley went to Riley won a semi-pro king title so kids really got talent so just out of respect to Rob I'm, I'm gonna go with Riley to the races and, and help out where I can I just kind of want to get a few more like semi-pro kings before I switch to pro next year hey, I'm just trying to push myself and time myself on practice courses and just kind of push myself a little harder because I have potential to go faster and last year I didn't use that potential I really like the freestyle side of like backcountry, like doing bow ties. 
and I really like hill climbing and then sometimes vice versa, you know. Well, it looks like you guys are uh, really shredding on those cats. Uh, it'd be really cool if we'd get a chance to ride those things. I know for me personally, it'd feel like old home week since I've been on one for the last three years. <laughs> you wanna ride them? That'd be sweet, man. Yeah, Not we've long. been cat deprived. They run pretty good for little stalkers. <laughs> All right, there this could go. get weird. completely awesome day out there. I wish we could have spent more time on the hill. I think needless to say, uh, we'll be doing this again, hopefully in the near future. Yeah, it's always a good time when Boondock Nation boys call. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. If you like what you saw, drop a comment. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and check us out on social media. We're posting up good stuff from days like this all the time. For sure. This is not the last time you'll be seeing the Black Cats, so stay tuned for more from this series.